Hey everyone, and welcome to part number two of our Christmas cardigan. Welcome to the Stitch Sessions, and if you're new here, I'm Karen, and we are working on a fantastic little mini-series called the Crochet Christmas Cardigan. And for those of you that have come back here all the time, you know how much I love to crochet and how much I love to craft with crochet. So if you're new, welcome. And if you're an old friend, welcome back. So in today's section of this series, we are gonna work on creating the body of the cardigan. Now in this particular uh, project, we are working it from the bottom up. So a lot of times you've seen, you know, if you're doing raglan style cardigans, uh, you hear them talk a lot from the top down. I've also done a crochet quick chat about how to construct a basic three block cardigan simply by creating three panels and then adding sleeves to it. So this is going to also be another one that will be added on to a crochet quick chat as a lesson on how to put together a cardigan from the bottom up. And this project actually will show you how to do it step by step in a real life project. So uh, this is being done in five parts. Today we're gonna to talk about part number two, which is the main body of our cardigan. So you can see I have my bottom trim done. So I've got everything done. Of course, I told you guys to weave in your ends and here I am. I haven't woven my ends yet, so guilty as charged. Now, let's talk about how we're gonna to continue to work this. So by the way, so we've created our trim and we always worked back and forth uh, widthwise, I guess we'll call it. But now we're turning our trim this way and we're now going to begin to work along this edge here and create our length. So you'll notice that you have a back side and a front side or a right side and a wrong side. Okay, so we'll find the right side of our trim and then we'll begin working along the sides of these rows to begin to build our block here. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. So you have your trusty diagram that you have uh, downloaded off the Crochet Crafty website. Again, I'm sorry, this printed on both sides. So if you, um, this is a free download, by the way, on the Crochet Crafty website, and it's also a link in part number one in case you missed it. Um, so you can download this and it's just a nice basic outline that you can kind of draw on and work out your design. So I have it in a curvy, outline and then I have one that's a little less curvy. I figure those two shapes will kind of suit most people. So I'm more on the curvy side. So that is the one I'm gonna use here. Now, when we created the bottom trim, we took the widest part of our body and we created the trim to that length. So for me, my hips are the widest part of my body. And for me, they were 48 inches or 122 centimeters. So you would crochet to your measurement. Again, you guys know I like to show you how to adjust garments to you as opposed to just giving you a generic template. Okay, so now the next measurement we do need to take is you want to determine how long would you like your cardigan to be, right? So I actually want mine to sit just kind of a below or mid thigh here, below the hips. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna work from the bottom here, from the trim, and now we're gonna crochet back and forth, back and forth, one big panel, just until you reach the height where you're gonna wanna create some armholes, okay? Now a great way to take this measurement, I generally like if I'm, especially if I'm doing a nice big relaxed, comfy sweater like this, I like to create the armhole to begin right at the bust apex, okay? And if you're unfamiliar where the bust apex is, it's basically right at the level of where your nipple would be on the breast, okay? So that is an apex and that is an apex. So what I would do is I would measure from here down to whatever length you like. Like if you want your sweater to be a little bit longer, then you're gonna find whatever measurement that is gonna be. So from the bust apex down or vice versa. Now, why do I choose that point? Okay, I'll use this graphic here. So if you see the bust apex here, it looks like it sits a little lower than the arm side or the underarm there. 
And that's just so I can create a little bit more of a relaxed fit. I don't want it to be fitted right under that arm. So generally the bust apex will give you a little bit of ease in the garment, a little bit of a relaxed fit. Now it's totally up to you. If you prefer your sleeve opening to come a little closer to the underarm, then instead of the bust apex, then, you know, just take a measurement right up to where you would like it, right? So for me, I measured 16 inches. So I'm gonna make my panel 16 inches tall. So that's from the top of the trim all the way up. Now my trim, if I bring it back, just so happens to be approximately two inches. So that means I'm gonna have a total of 18 inches from my bust apex all the way to the bottom of the trim. Now this picture, obviously, I'm not an artist. It looks quite short, but if I were to do it on here, mine is gonna be relatively right about that height there, okay? So that is what I wanna determine. Okay, and once you have that measurement, now we're gonna get started on crocheting our cardigan body. Okay, so this is now where I'm gonna bring in my red yarn, which is super exciting. So again, I'm using the Red Heart Comfort yarn. Comes in a ball of 340 grams, which has 600 yards or 548 meters. As explained in part one, make sure to get enough yarn. So if you're making it quite large, you might wanna get a couple of extra balls, okay? It is a medium weight four, as is our whole project. So this is where I'm bringing this in. So, you know, it's we're leaning into that vein of the ugly Christmas sweater. So let me just bring this back here for a second. I had my highlighters here before. So we did the trim in an alternating color here. Right, so we had, I'm just using this as our green, our beige, green, beige, green, beige, yada, yada, yada. And now we're gonna introduce the pink as the main, or in my case, I'm using red. So that's gonna be the main color of the body. Later when we talk about doing cuffs and the trim, I'm gonna come back to that original cream and green color. So I'm really going all out with the Christmas colors. Okay, so we're going to introduce our new yarn here. It is red yarn and hopefully it shows up okay on camera. A lot of times red yarn can have kind of a, a funky kind of coloring on screen. So hopefully this is not going to be too distracting. So what I'm going to do, some of you, if you want, you can place a slip knot on your hook first. A lot of times in projects like this, I do not place a, a slip knot on my hook first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the very edge of the first row. Now, I have a total of 290 rows. Remember that each stripe here is two rows of slip stitches. So in essence, I have 145 stripes. We are only gonna work into the side of each stripe, so to speak. So we're not gonna work into each row because that would be too many uh, stitches for us kind of jammed in here. We are gonna be using the single crochet stitch for this first row. So you just, you might have to help it here because I did sew in that end here. And so it's just a little tighter here, but I wanna find somewhere where I can insert my hook. And then I just want to hook the yarn on and then pull it through. And it's a little tight here. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so we've got a loop here. And then I just throw that tail over and I chain one. And that will secure your yarn. And then I'm gonna work over that. So what we wanna do now is just go back into that same spot and we wanna place a single crochet. So that chain one just helped us get a little bit of height. Insert our hook back. Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through too. So we've got our first single crochet stitch there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna proceed to go into the edge of each stripe section and single crochet. So usually there's a little loop at the top there. We're gonna insert our hook, 
yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. And that's it, that's all. So I'm gonna insert and single crochet. Insert and single crochet. Okay, so you've got something that looks like that. So remember I said for me, I had 145 stripes. So that means I will have 145 stitches. And I'm using the single crochet stitch here for row number one. So I'm gonna leave you to do that. You're gonna go all the way around. So we're still working one large panel, okay? And then once you get to the end, I'm gonna talk you through row number two, which is gonna be the repeat for the rest of this panel. So go ahead and do that. And I'll see you back here shortly. Okay, so this is future me just coming to you right after I explained how we're going to begin our first row of our body. Something to keep in mind. Now, when we created the, the trim here, we have lots of stretch, right? And so we were working our band this way, and now we are working this way. Now, because the band was done in slip stitches, and so we did two rows of slip stitches per color. So remember, we had 290 rows, or at least I did for my side. And so once we started um, inserting the red color, you can see that actually I just went into every second row or every time I changed colors. So every single stitch is actually taking up the space of two rows. Now, what happened here, once I did that first row of single crochets, it actually shrunk my circumference. So this is just something to take note, learn from my boo-boo, but I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna fix it. So if you've already gone ahead and done it, it's a super, super easy fix. So I basically have now measured, so you can see I've already gone ahead a little bit with the body. So I've now measured my circumference and I've lost about nine inches. That's quite a bit. Now I don't necessarily need this to uh, close right up because that's not how I plan on wearing this sweater. Um, but, you know, it's leaving quite a gap down the center front. So if you are just about to start, one thing that you want to do is instead of going into every one stitch into every color, you might want to do two stitches in every other row. And so uh, some of you might think, well, if there's two rows here, two rows of slip stitches, just put two stitches into each row. But I believe I talked about this already, and the problem is these rows are so tight that if you do put two stitches into every single color change, which is one row, one stitch into each row, it's actually going to increase the length. So it's gonna to be too many stitches. So this is the kind of the funky thing about working into the sides of slip stitches row. So something that might help is start with one stitch, then do two, then do one, then do two. And see if it just helps to kind of spread out the length. So you can see, look at how much that stretches, right? So it has a lot of stretch, but I've done less stitches. So give that a go and see how it feels to you. Now, if you find that that might be too much brain work and too too much brain power to think about, go ahead and do as I did. And at the end, once we're talking about the final trim, we're going to add back in some width. So don't worry about that. Um, but I just wanted to come and address that because I know that probably you're going to finish a few rows and realize that you're losing length. So that is what happened with me. And so those are two options that you can do to proceed forward. Okay. So I'm going to leave you to do the main body and then I'm going to meet up with you. And then we're going to talk about creating our, the rest of our panels to the top of our body. Okay. So I have finished my first row and look at that. It's instantly looking Christmassy already. Now the camera doesn't seem to be picking it up, but Hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of a tinsel that runs through the red as well as the cream and it's just adding to this really fun Christmas feel. So again, this is the front of my cardigan and then this will be the inside. So that's what the back of that row looks like. 
and I have 145 stitches. So remember that is for my size. Yours, the number of your stitches will go according to the length of your row. Okay, so let's go on to row number two, which will be the repeat to create your panel here. So we are going to always begin by chaining one and we're gonna turn our work and this is just to turn our work. So this chain one will not count as anything. And into the very first stitch of every row, you'll always place a half double crochet stitch. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, and pull through. So you have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three, okay? And the stitch we're gonna be using is the linked single crochet stitch for this cardigan. So the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna find the left loop or the left leg of the half double crochet stitch. So it creates three little loops here. You're always gonna find the one furthest to the left, and then you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull up a loop like that. So you have three loops on your hook, and then you yarn over and pull through all three. That's a linked single crochet stitch. Now you're probably thinking, but there were three loops there. So the first stitch is a half double crochet stitch, but we are now going to perform a single crochet stitch. But why it looked like there was three loops is because we're always gonna go in through the left leg. So you see a single crochet stitch only has two legs here. You have a left and a right, hopefully you can see that. So you always insert your hook through that left leg first of the previous stitch and then insert into the next stitch to pull up a loop. And that's why it looks like you have three loops, but this actually belongs to the previous stitch. You then, then yarn over and just pull through all three and you treat it like a single crochet. So then again, you find the left leg there, insert there first before you go into the next stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And that is the linked single crochet stitch. Uh, we've done it in a few other projects. Some of you may remember the beach tote project. That was a really fun one. That was done using the linked single crochet stitch. I think I've also done a dishcloth uh, using that stitch. And I probably have a basic tutorial on it. In any case, if you're ever interested in any of those other projects, I'll leave a, a link for those in the description box down below as well. But I know you're probably going to be pretty busy working on this project right now. So just one more time again, I'm going to insert my hook first into the left leg, and then I proceed into the next stitch to pull up a loop. I yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so it just creates this really lovely little, I call it a loop-de-loo kind of look. And what I love about this stitch is it's fairly stretchy. So just like what we did here with the uh, bottom trim, it's going to create a nice stretchy fabric, which is great for a cozy cardigan. So that's it. This is the stitch we're using, the linked single crochet stitch. You're going to go all the way to the end. At, in the very last stitch, you're just going to place a linked single crochet stitch. And every time you begin a new row, you will chain one, turn your work, and into the very first stitch, it's always a half double crochet stitch. So exactly what we did at the beginning of this row is how you will begin all of your rows from now on. And you're just going to repeat row number two until you get that length or that height that we talked about. So remember for me, so this panel, so right now it's just going to look like one long rectangle. So remember, this is going to eventually wrap around like this. And this is essentially going to be the opening of your cardigan. Okay, so right now all we're going to worry about is just creating this long rectangle. And we want to go until we reach, either you're going to go to your bust apex or you're actually gonna to go to the bottom, just underneath your underarm there, and remember to mark down your measurements. So for me, that's 16 inches, which is probably something like 35-ish centimeters, something like that, okay? So this is part number two 
I'm going to leave you to create this panel and then I'll meet back up with you once you've finished that main chunk for your cardigan. Okay, so I've reached my 16 inches. In fact, I've done just a few more. And what I did is once I got to a good height, I kind of fitted the bottom of the sweater around myself just about at the bust line area. And, and then I could see if I liked it, if I liked how long it went down. I like mine to go a little bit lower than my hips. So once I saw that that was uh, the right height that I liked, now I am ready to go ahead and do the upper portion of the cardigan, which is where we're going to create our armholes. So let's chat about that next. Okay guys, so I have finished my length. And now we're ready to start doing the upper portion of the body. So all we're gonna do is you want to find the center point of your work. So you're gonna fold it over perfectly in half. Look at how cool that looks with the green and the red. So once you have it perfectly in half, you're gonna mark your center point here with a stitch marker. Okay, just like that. If you're ever unsure, just count your stitches, okay? So you should have relatively the equal number of stitches on this side as on that side, okay? So that will become the center of your back. Then what you're gonna do is you are going to fold it backward so that now you have the halfway point between the back and the front. And then again, you will take your stitch marker and place it in the stitch that falls in the center, okay? And then you're gonna do the exact same thing. So then you will open this here. And so you can see you've got your stitch marker marking your center. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the other side, you're gonna fold it in until it meets that marker there. And then you will place whoops, a stitch marker on that center fold as well. And a safety pin works just as well. In fact, I'm not a fan of these stitch markers, but they will do the job for now. There we go. So now what do we have? We have our opening here to the body of our cardigan. And then when you open it up, you can see this is the center of your back. This is going to denote where your armhole is going to be on this side. And this one is going to be where your armhole is going to be on that side. So now we are ready to continue doing the upper portion. So you're going to do it in three parts. So you can see I ended here for my main body. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crochet across to that stitch marker, but then we're gonna turn our work and come back. And we are gonna work up the height until it reaches to the height of our shoulders. You're going to snip your yarn once you're there, then you're gonna come back to this side and do the same thing, snip off your yarn. And then when you're done these two, then you're going to turn your work over and do the back panel. Now, the back panel will be from this stitch marker. You're gonna skip over that all the way to this stitch marker here. So you will go all the way back and forth. So the back portion of the upper body will be the widest, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I will, for those of you that are a little newer, I will actually take you through getting started on each side because you also wanna make sure, see how there are these little ridges here because we've turned our work back and forth. You always wanna make sure that when you start a new section, like here is easy because we've stopped here, so we're just gonna continue naturally. But when you come here, you wanna make sure that you're starting on the right side from this end. So you wanna make sure that you're starting here and working that way and then coming across and that will make your ridges continuous, you see? So here, 
I am actually going to turn this and work this way. That means when I begin this one, I need to open it, start from here, and work across. And then when I'm ready to do the back, I'm going to open it up, start at this stitch marker, and work my way across. In fact, I can probably just take that out now because that was just to help me mark my center. All right, so the next section, nice and easy peasy. You're just going to continue doing rows, but you're doing it in three sections. And then the main body of our cardigan will be complete. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that I've done, I've finished one of the front panels and I finished my back panel. And so now you can really see where the armhole is going to sit. Now, what you want to do, which is what I did, is when you're finished that first panel, you want to kind of measure it against yourself or the person you're making it for. And so I decided to have my armhole begin where my bust point is, okay? So then from there, I would just make sure that this starts at the bust point and see how far up it goes to reach to your shoulder. And you do want it to kind of curve over the shoulder. So I did, for me, I did a total of 30 rows from this point up. And just to give you the little measurement here, mine is just about 10 inches or 25 and a half centimeters. And so I realized that I needed to add a few more rows just to make it more comfortable because I want this to be nice and a relaxed fit. So this is what you want to make sure before you move on to the next panel, just so that you know the height that you're dealing with or the length that you're dealing with. Okay, so just a little tidbit there. So once you've got the length that you like, then you snip off your yarn and come back down to the beginning and remember to start with the project facing the way you started this row. So for me, it was on the wrong side. So you can see my, my trim is facing the wrong side. And therefore, you will keep the pattern looking relatively the same. See how the ridges are matching up nicely? It's just a little detail, but it does make a difference on how nice it's going to look. So just make sure you pay attention to that. And then you're going to pick up here and then continue to go across the back to those stitch markers back and forth and then do the same number of rows. So now the back and the other side are going to be super easy. This first side panel is the one that you want to kind of test out and see how you like the length and the fit. And I must admit, as I was working on this, I... I kept thinking this armhole looks huge, but in reality, it does fit nicely. And then once you've got your back panel, what you could do is just place a pin here and then try it on. And you'll see that it actually fits quite nicely. And you wanna have a little bit of room here, right? So um, this is actually working out a-okay for me. So that is all I wanted to let you guys know on that. So just continue on now. And as you can see, I've still got the last side panel to do. And then our body of the cardigan is going to be complete. Okay, guys, just one other thing I wanted to mention. When you are sewing your shoulder seams, it is strongly recommended that you make sure that your cardigan is wrong side out. So you can see that that is um, my trim here. That's the right side. This is the wrong side. So that is how I'm gonna sew my shoulder seams together. And then when you turn it right side out, it's gonna look nice and seamless. So I just wanted to quickly show you for those of you that maybe just need a little refresher on the whip stitch. So I'm just going to thread my yarn needle here. Okay. And so I just wanna start from the end and you're just gonna match it stitch for stitch up until the point where you want to leave for your neck opening. Remember, we're not gonna stitch right to the end. And actually I accidentally took out the pin that marked where I was going to stop. But I'm just gonna do this here to show you, just so you have a nice clear picture. So I'm here, I'm gonna just insert my needle into the very first stitch there, and I'm gonna go into the full stitch, and then I'm gonna find the very first stitch on the other side here. 
Okay, so this is, looks like a, a chain one turn. So I'm just gonna insert, pull through. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that from the front to the back. Some people like to go always from the back to the front, totally up to you. And then I'm just gonna come back to the front and I'm gonna go into the next stitch, which is right there, and then find the next stitch corresponding. Go in through there and keep pulling through. And you want it to be snug, but you don't want it to be super tight, yeah? Otherwise your, your work is gonna bunch a little bit. So that's it, that's all. So you're just gonna keep going. In my case, I'm gonna keep going from front to back, front to back, and that's how it gets whipped together. And sorry about the lighting, guys. It seems to be red never works well on camera, but of course, for a Christmas cardigan, it had to be red. So hopefully you are able to see everything okay. So that's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna whip stitch until wherever you mark yours there. Then you're gonna weave in your end and then you're gonna come on this side. Like I said before, you can do the same thing. Always start from the outer edge and work towards wherever you've marked. You've placed a pin to mark for your neck hole, okay? So that is all you're gonna do for the whip stitch and then you'll be ready to move on to part number three. Alrighty, so I have sewed up my shoulder seams and I just wanted you guys to see that this is what the neck hole opening looks like. So it might look a little bit angular right now, but don't you worry because we're gonna smooth all that out later on. So this is the end of part number two. And as you can get a sneak peek, I got ahead of myself and started doing my sleeves. So you're gonna be seeing this in part three. And so part number two, we've just been focusing completely on the body. So at this point, you will have completed your bottom trim your base body and then your upper panels for your two fronts and the back. Now, if you have any questions as always, make sure to leave it for me down below or you can email me directly. I know a lot of you guys like to do that. Email me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And this is the part right here where if you're trying it on, maybe it's too tight or it's too small. And like I explained earlier, um, your trim would have been your true circumference. And based on how I started, my body did shrink a little bit on the two front panels. But as I explained, I'm gonna fix that with the trim. So don't be afraid if that happens, there's a way to fix it. And if you need some advice or have any questions, just get in touch with me. All right, now if you're new here and you're having fun with this Christmas project series, come on over, press that subscribe button, hang out with me every Wednesday when I upload a regular brand new tutorial and have some fun with us doing a Christmas crochet project. And now remember, don't forget to press that notification bell and that way you'll always get notified every time I upload a brand new video and the next segment will be out in just a few days. And if you happen to miss segment number one, there is a link down below where you can click on it and find out how to start your Christmas cardigan. All right, guys, that's all for now. I will see you in part number three. And if this video is out just before my regular Wednesday video, you may see a different video coming out soon. It's simply because we still wanna maintain our regular series scheduling where we work on a pillow project. And so, November's pillow project is going to be amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So if this video comes out a little close to that date, you're probably going to see that video first. And then I'll return back to take you through part number three, which as you can see here, is crocheting your sleeves. And then we'll continue on from there. So guys, happy crocheting. Have an amazing day. And as always, take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you guys in the next session. Bye-bye.